so far, with the vast majority of the shapes that I have talked to you about, I have taken that 3D shape and I've said, well, you understand the surface area by thinking about its net, right? However, 3D shapes are tricky. Like, you remember when I asked you about count the number of faces on this shape yesterday, right? Sometimes that's hard because you can't see what's going on on a flat piece of paper like is in your textbook or your workbook, etc. So for that reason, for almost all of the shapes, I have presented to you, I have created um, just a 3D model out of paper. And today's no exception. So I have a cone here. Now, this cone is actually really special. We're going to develop the surface area of this cone because of the fact that it is, is round. I suppose you could kind of call it a circular pyramid. Because of that, the uh, formula for the surface area is kind of weird. We're going to develop it but it's going to be so much easier if you don't just look at my cone, but you have one of your own. So, if you have a pair of scissors, what we're looking at here is just the cone, right? We'll get to spheres later on. Just like every other surface area we've looked at, you can take the 3D shape, unfold it, which gives you the net, and then look at each of the components. Now, you remember, when I gave you this to begin with, it looked like this. Okay, so just in case yours has been butchered beyond recognition, okay, you had the circle. These extra bits aren't part of the surface area. Why is that? They're they're, yeah, that's right. It's just there so that you've got something to stick onto. So they don't really form part of the cone. Then you've got this bit down here. Now, does anyone know what this shape is actually called? It starts with an S. So this is the circle, which starts with a C. And this thing is actually called a sector, and we all need to write this down. <laughs> so you got a circle, does it ring a bell, and then you've got a sector. Now, to work out the surface area of this cone, just like every other area, we need two measurements. The first one's the most obvious one. You did the area of a circle in our review this morning. The area of a circle only requires a single measurement for its area, namely, the radius, right? The radius. So on your circle, I'd like you to add that radius in. I'd also like you to put it in on the cone. It's really important that you can sort of map back and forth between this 2D representation and what's happening in three dimensions. So this radius and this radius, same length. Now from there, the quickest way, the most efficient way to get the remaining area is to work out something called the slant height. Now, do you remember with triangles that we looked at that right angle triangle before? The perpendicular height is standing upright like this. Okay, I'm not gonna draw it in on purpose, but it's up there, it's straight up and down, and it would be at a right angle with the radius. Okay? The slant height, as its name suggests, is slanted. Okay? So where we're gonna put it in this, on this diagram is here. Okay. Now we're not going to call it H because that's confusing. We use H for the real height, the perpendicular height. So to distinguish this one, I'm going to just call it L for length. But it's the slant height and I'm going to name it that so that I remember what it's talking about. Okay. Alright, now let's start to have a look over to this 2D part. Area of the circle. We know that really well. The area of a circle is just pi r squared. So we know that really, really well. Okay. Now, the area of a sector is a little bit trickier. There's different ways to work out what the area of a sector is, depending on what information you have access to. So being that for us, we have this radius down here and this slant height, here's how we're going to work it out. I want you to look at your cone in front of you. Okay. I want you to see where is the slant height on your cone. If you've done it, well, I think you'll find the slant height is actually marked in for you. Do you see it there? See that, that seam along there? That's the slant height. Are you following with me? Okay. So look at that slant height. Now go back, rewind in time. Where is that line on here? Where is it? Hmm. Now it is a radius. The radius of what though? Sector. It's the radius of the sector. It's, it's this thing here. Do you see that? In fact, that's the physical line. In fact, if you colored it, you might have noticed. This line becomes that line there, that slant height. Okay. 
okay? So therefore, I can take the L that's over here, and I can bring it over to this part over here, okay? Now, you've got to be a little careful with yourself here, because even though these both look like circles that are roughly the same size, the circles that these come from are not the same size. Have a look at this sector. Do you see if I completed it? Completed that sector? That circle would be much bigger than this guy, which makes the, what did this turn into? It turned into the base, didn't it, okay? So they're actually different sizes. That means there are different radii, radiuses. Be careful with that, okay? All right, I've got this length over here. Hmm. Think carefully with me. I want you to have a look at this sector and the round part that goes all the way around. Okay? Now we can actually work out that round part there. It's called an arc. And I'm going to show you how. Okay? But you need to think very carefully. You remember when you cut both things out and then you, uh, you folded this around so it was the round bit, the curved part, and then you fit it onto here. Do you remember that? Okay. Now I wonder if you remember. Look at your shape carefully. When you folded this around, see this arc here that I'm talking about? Did you notice that I deliberately planned this net so that this arc exactly sat on top of the base? Did you notice that? Right? It wasn't bigger than the base, it wasn't smaller, it lined up really nicely. And that's how you can make an actual cone. Okay. So what is this length all the way around? It's the, it's the circumference of which circle? Because there's two. It's the base circle, right? Now, I know what the radius is, so what is this circumference? It's just going to be 2 pi r. So this arc is the same length. So it's 2 pi r. Okay. okay, we've got all the pieces in place now. We need to do a little bit of work with equations.